Now, one of the easiest and most commonly used method of solving limits is DL hospital rule or in French, hospital's rule. Now, basic construct of the hospital's rule is if we have this limit, x tends to a fx upon gx and this is 0 upon 0 or infinity upon infinity form then we can write this limit as limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x now if we use direct substitution we can write this as f dash a upon g dash a now if f dash a upon g dash a is also 0 upon 0 or infinity upon infinity form we can further differentiate this and we can write this as limit x tends to a f double dash x upon g double dash x and if we substitute directly it will be f double dash a upon g double dash a and if further it is 0 upon 0 or infinity upon infinity form we write this as this limit x tends to a f triple dash x upon g triple dash x which is f triple dash a upon g triple dash a and we can keep doing so whenever we are getting 0 upon 0 or infinity upon infinity form. Now since this rule it requires differentiation it is one of the easiest methods to solve limits. Now say for example we have this question which is find this limit x tends to 0 log 1 minus x square upon log cos x. Now this is log 1 which is 0 and cos 0 is 1 log 1 is 0 so it is 0 upon 0 form and if it is 0 upon 0 form we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now in L'Hopital's rule we will write this as limit x tends to 0 and we will differentiate this function. Now derivative of log is 1 upon 1 minus x square and then derivative of 1 minus x square will be minus 2x upon derivative of log cos x. Now derivative of log is 1 upon cos x and derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Now this is 10x. So what we can do is we can write this as this limit x tends to 0 2 upon 1 minus x square into x upon 10x. Now x upon 10x it is 0 upon 0 form which is standard limit. So this limit is 1 and if we put x as 0 this is 0. So by direct substitution value of this limit is simply 2. Now let us take another example and this is find this limit x tends to 1 3 into x to the power 1 by 3 minus x minus 2 upon 3x square minus 6x plus 3. Now we put x as 1 this is 3 minus 3 0 and it is 6 minus 6 0 so it is 0 upon 0 form. Now since it is 0 upon 0 form we can use L'Hopital's rule so it will be this limit x tends to 1 Now we differentiate this this is 3 and derivative of x to the power 1 by 3 is 1 by 3 x to the power minus 2 by 3 and then minus 1 upon and the denominator is 6 x minus 6. Now here 3 and 3 will cancel so this limit it will be this limit x tends to 1 x to the power minus 2 by 3 minus 1 upon 6x minus 6. Now we put x as 1, 1 minus 1 is 0 and 6 minus 6 is 0. So this again is 0 upon 0 form. Now we can differentiate this. So it will be this limit x tends to 1. Now this is minus 2 by 3 x to the power minus 5 by 3 upon 6. Now if we use direct substitution, it will be minus 1 by 9. So answer to this limit is minus 1 by 9. Hospital's rule or 
better in French, L'Hôpital or L'Hospital rule, is used extensively in calculus to evaluate limits of the indeterminate forms 0 upon 0 and infinity upon infinity. The rule was first published by the French mathematician Guillaume du Hospital in 1696 in a book whose title can be roughly translated to English as Analysis of the Infinitely Small for the Understanding of Curved Lines. Now this book is considered to be the very first book on differential calculus. It is somewhat controversially believed that the rule which goes by the name of L'Hôpital was introduced to him in 1694 by his teacher Johann Bernoulli. L'Hôpital met Bernoulli at the end of 1691 when Bernoulli was just 24 and was new to the mathematics world. By then, L'Hôpital was already a member of important circle consisting of mathematicians and physicists. L'Hôpital identified the talent of Bernoulli and employed him to give him private lessons for a short period of time. There have been historical accounts which indicate that L'Hôpital may have paid Bernoulli a retainer in lieu of his discoveries and may have signed a pact that Bernoulli would hide his discovery from others. Initially content with the agreement and the princely sum, Bernoulli continued to honour their agreement. It was when the accolades bestowed on L'Hôpital's work, he grew increasingly unhappy. Bernoulli complained that he had not received enough credit for his contributions, in spite of the preface of L'Hôpital's book which says, I recognize I owe much to the insights of Bernoulli, especially to those of young John, currently a professor. I did unceremoniously use their discoveries as well as those of Mr. Leibniz. For this reason, I consent that they claim as much credit as they please and will content myself with what they will agree to leave me. It was in 1704 when L'Hôpital died, Bernoulli publicly revealed of their agreement and claimed credit for almost everything of real interest in L'Hôpital's book. At that time, barring Leibniz and few others, everyone in France regarded his claims as ridiculous, primarily on two counts. One, L'Hôpital's mathematical talent was well regarded and two, Bernoulli was involved in several other priority disputes, including one with his brother and later in his life with his own son. However, it was in 1921, a manuscript of Bernoulli's lectures on differential calculus from 1691 to 1692 was discovered in the Basel University. The text showed remarkable similarities to L'Hôpital's writing, substantiating Bernoulli's account of the book's origin. Considering all that, somewhat arguably, I can say that if history had played itself differently, we would have been discussing the Bernoulli's rule today. In this video, we'll discuss the necessary conditions required and the statement of L'Hôpital's rule. And we'll also discuss with example when we can apply and when we cannot apply L'Hôpital's rule in a given limit. Now for L'Hôpital's rule to hold, there are four conditions that are needed. And the first condition is these functions fx and gx they have to be differentiable functions in an open interval i containing this point a except possibly at x equal to a. Now the second condition is this limit x tends to a fx and gx either it should be 0 or it should be plus or minus infinite. So this rule holds when fx upon gx is either 0 upon 0 form or infinity upon infinity form with plus or minus sign. Now the third condition is this g dash x it should not be equal to 0 for all x except possibly at a and the fourth condition is this limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x this limit it must exist and suppose this limit is equal to f so if all the four conditions are met then we can say this limit x tends to a fx upon gx is equal to limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x. Now we look at all the four conditions. Now the first condition is these functions fx and gx they have to be differentiable functions except possibly at x equal to a. So let us take an example which is limit x tends to 0 x into log mod x. Now if I'll put x as 0 so it'll be 0 and then log limit x tends to 0 log 0 it tends to minus infinite so it is 0 into minus infinite form. Now I can write it as 
लिमिट एक्स टेंस टू जीरो लॉग मॉड एक्स अपॉन वन अपॉन एक्स विच इज इंफिनिटी अपॉन इंफिनिटी फॉर्म सो नाउ इट सेटिस्फाइज द सेकेंड कंडीशन विच इज इट इज इंफाइनिट अपॉन इंफाइनिट फॉर्म नाउ लॉग मॉड एक्स दिस फंक्शन इट इज डिफरेंशियबल फॉर ऑल द वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स एक्सेप्ट एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो एंड वन अपॉन एक्स दिस इज अगेन नॉट डिफरेंशियबल एट जीरो सो हियर एफ एंड जी दे आर डिफरेंशियबल इन ओपन इंटरवल आई एक्सेप्ट एट एक्स इक्वल टू ए फॉर विच वील हैव टू फाइंड दिस लिमिट सो वी कैन अप्लाई लॉपिटल्स रूल एट अ पॉइंट वेर एफ एक्स एंड जी एक्स दे मे नॉट बी डिफरेंशियबल सो नाउ इन दिस केस इफ आई अप्लाई लॉपिटल्स रूल आई कैन राइट लिमिट एक्सटेंड्स टू जीरो One upon mod x, so I'll differentiate the numerator, and then derivative of mod x is mod x by x, and I'll differentiate the denominator, so it is minus one upon x square. So I can cancel mod x with mod x. I'll write limit x tends to zero minus x, and which is zero. So in this case, the value of this limit is simply zero. So we may apply L'Hopital's rule even when the function f or g or maybe both they are not differentiable at x equal to a now to illustrate the second case let us take up another example which is limit x tends to 0 greatest linear function of x upon x now i'll try and solve this question and before end i'm going to tell you i'm going to solve it in a wrong way so when limit x tends to 0 so greater function of 0 is 0 x is 0 so it is 0 upon 0 form now this greatest linear function of x it is not differentiable at 0 but we don't mind so we'll take up any interval between minus 1 and plus 1 and we can still apply l'hopital's rule so if i'll apply l'hopital's rule i can write limit x tends to 0 then derivative of greatest integer function of x now when x is not an integer greatest integer function of x it behaves like a constant function and derivative of constant function is simply 0 and derivative of x is 1 so the value of this limit is 0 which in this case is completely wrong now can you identify where did i go wrong so what i can actually do is i can write this limit as limit x tends to 0 negative greatest linear function of x upon x which is x left hand limit and i can write its right hand limit which is limit x tends to 0 positive greatest linear function of x upon x now when limit x tends to 0 negative if i'll put x as 0 negative so what is greatest linear function of 0 negative so greatest linear function of 0 negative is minus 1 and here this value will be simply 0 negative so minus 1 upon 0 negative is neither 0 upon 0 form nor infinity upon infinity form this value is actually infinite so for this left hand limit i cannot apply l'hopital's rule now on the right hand side when x is zero positive greatest linear function of x is zero x is also zero now here i have zero upon zero form here i can use l'hopital's rule so limit x tends to zero positive now derivative of greatest linear function of x will be zero x will be one so now this limit is zero so limit x tends to zero greatest linear function of x upon x it doesn't exist because on the left hand side i have infinite and on the right hand side i have zero but if the question is limit x tends to zero positive greatest linear function of x upon x which is zero upon zero form now we can apply l'hopital's rule in this case to get this answer as zero so second condition is l'hopital's rule can only be applied if the limit is either of the form zero upon zero or plus minus infinity upon infinity now for this third condition that is g dash x should not be zero in this interval i except possibly at a so i'll take up a counter example by mathematician otto stolz and what he has done was he has taken two functions fx and gx fx is defined as x plus sin x into cos x and gx as x plus sin x into cos x into e to the power sin x and now we wish to calculate this limit which is limit x tends to infinite fx upon gx So if I write this limit, I can write this limit as limit x tends to infinite f x is x plus sine x into cos x, and here it is x plus sine x into cos x into e to the power 
sin x. Now I can cancel x plus sin x cos x. So I'll write this limit as limit x tends to infinite e to the power minus sin x. Now if I put this limit, I'll get it as e to the power minus sin infinite. And sin infinite, it is an oxidating value. So I'll get this result as an oxidating value which oxidates from e to the power minus 1 to e. So when I'm getting an oxidating result in this case, we know that limit does not exist. Now I'll try and find f dash x. So if I write f dash x, so if I'll differentiate, I'll write 1 plus, I'll write it as sin 2x. So 1 by 2 sin 2x so will be 1 by 2 and then derivative of sin 2x will be cos 2x into 2. So 2 and 2 will cancel. So I'll write 1 plus 2 cos square x minus 1. So I'll express this f dash x as 2 cos square x. Now I'll differentiate g dash x also. So if I'll differentiate g dash x, I'll write it as x plus sin x into cos x into derivative of this function, which is e to the power sin x into cos x plus e to the power sin x as it is into derivative of this function, which is again 2 cos square x. So now here I can take e to the power sin x and cos x common. So if I take e to the power sin x into cos x common, I can write it as x plus sin x into cos x plus 2 cos x. Now I'll find this limit, which is limit x tends to infinite f dash x upon g dash x. So limit x tends to infinite f dash x upon g dash x, this limit will be limit x tends to infinite f dash x is 2 cos square x. And then here it will be e to the power sin x into cos x and here will be x plus sin x into cos x plus 2 cos x. Now if I will put x is infinite, now it is oxidating value between 0 and 1. This is oxidating value between 1 upon e and e, oxidating value between minus 1 and plus 1 and then it is 1 upon infinite. So anything finite upon infinite will be 0. So in this case, limit x tends to infinite, f dash x upon g dash x will be 0. Now in this example, fx upon gx, it is infinity upon infinity form. As x tends to infinite, it will be infinite upon infinite. Functions fx and gx, they are differentiable functions. This limit x tends to infinite, f dash x upon g dash x, it exists and it is equal to 0. But still, this limit, it doesn't exist. So from this counter example, Otto is told, he mentioned that this condition g dash x unequal to 0 is required for hospital rule to hold. Now if we look at g dash x, so if I put limit x tends to infinite, g dash x, so it will be oxidating value 1 upon e to e and then this cos infinite, it changes, it oxidates between minus 1 and plus 1. So there are infinitely many points where this function g dash x it is taking the value 0 in the neighborhood of infinite. And now the fourth necessary condition which is required for L'Hopital's rule to hold is this limit x tends to f, f dash x upon g dash x, this limit should exist. So for this we will take up an example which is limit x tends to 0, x plus sin x upon x which is infinity upon infinity form. So in this case, these two functions, they are differentiable and continuous. They are of the form infinity upon infinity and then this x is unequal to 0 in this interval. Now, if I use L'Hopital's rule, I can write limit x tends to infinite. So, if I differentiate the numerator, I'll get 1 plus cos x and the value of x is 1. So, if I put this limit, I'll get 1 plus cos infinite, which is an oxidating value, minus 1 to plus 1. So, it is 1 plus oxidating value, minus 1 to plus 1. So I'm not getting an exact value. I'm getting an oscillating limit. So in this case, we'll say limit does not exist. 
But if I'll actually solve this question, I can write limit x tends to infinite. I'll cancel x with x. I'll write 1 plus sine of x upon x. So this is 1 plus and then limit x tends to infinite sine x upon x. So it is 1 plus and then oscillating value between minus 1 and plus 1 upon infinite. So anything finite upon infinite is nothing but 0. So actually this limit exists and the value of this limit is 1. But using L'Hopital's rule, we are getting limit does not exist. So which gives us our fourth condition and which is for this L'Hopital's rule to hold, this limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x, this limit should exist. Now there are numerous other examples where all the four conditions of L'Hopital's rule are met. But still, if we use L'Hopital's rule, we'll go in the endless loop. Same is true with the second example also, which is infinity upon infinity form, differentiable also, and then denominator is not equal to zero. So if I differentiate, I'll write limit x tends to infinite, one upon, one upon twice under root x square plus one into two x. So which is limit x tends to infinite under root of x square plus one upon x, which again is infinity upon infinity form. So if I differentiate it again, I'll get limit x tends to infinite one upon twice under root x square plus one into two x upon one. So which is limit x tends to infinite x upon under root of x square plus one, which again is infinity upon infinity form. So again, if we keep using L'Hopital's rule, we'll go in the same loop. And for this one, if I'll take x out, I'll cancel it. I'll get this limit as plus one. So L'Hopital's rule, it may not be useful in all the cases. So the point is L'Hopital's rule is an amazing rule and students, they find it fascinating and simple, but then no one size fits all. So if studying L'Hopital's rule hampers you to study or give the equal importance to all other ways to solve limits, then you need to reconsider because there are many situations where L'Hopital's rule might not be useful or it may not even be applicable. So now let us prove L'Hopital's rule. Now, as we already know, there are four conditions required for L'Hopital's rule to hold. And the first condition was the functions fx and gx, they have to be differentiable in the interval, except possibly at that point A for which we want to calculate this limit. Second condition was this fx and gx, either both of them should be zero or they should be of the form plus infinite or minus infinite. Now, the third condition was this g dash x, it should not be zero in the neighborhood of A. And the fourth requirement was this limit x tends to it, f dash x and g dash x, it exists, and this is equals to L. Now we'll consider a special case proof of L'Hopital's rule, and we are considering the case when fx and gx are continuously differentiable functions, and limit x tends to a fx is zero, and limit x tends to a gx is zero. Now why are we discussing this special case proof? We are discussing this special case proof because at our level, when we deal with L'Hopital's rule, then we mostly deal with functions which are continuously differentiable. Say for example, polynomial functions, trigonometric functions, exponential function, logarithm function, all these functions, they are examples of continuously differentiable function. So let us get on with the proof. And the proof simply is, suppose I have to calculate this limit, which is limit x tends to a fx upon gx and since fx is zero and gx is zero, when limit x tends to a, so it is zero upon zero form. Now, what I'll do is I can write this limit x tends to a fx minus fa upon gx minus ga because the value of fa is zero and the value of ga is also zero. So I can express limit x tends to a fx upon gx as limit x tends to a fx minus fa upon gx minus ga. Now what I'll also do is I'll write it as limit x tends to a fx minus fa and I'll divide it with x minus a and I'll write this as gx minus ga upon x minus a. Now I'll take this limit in the numerator and denominator so I'll write it as limit x tends to a fx minus fa upon x minus a divided by limit x tends to a gx minus ga upon x minus a 
and this limit fx minus fa upon x minus a limit extends to is nothing but simply f dash a and this limit gx minus g upon x minus a is g dash a. Now because we have assumed that these functions fx and gx they are continuously differentiable now I can say this f dash a upon g dash a is actually equal to limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x and that should be equals to l. So the condition that the function should be continuously differentiable is required because we want to express this f dash a upon g dash a as limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x. So from here we can say this limit x tends to a fx upon gx is equal to limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x in this special case when f and g they are continuously differentiable and limit x tends to a fx is 0, limit x tends to a gx is 0, g dash x is unequal to 0 in the neighborhood of a and this limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x is it exists and is equal to n. So that's our first case proof of fx and gx. Now we consider the case when limit x tends to a fx and gx they tends to plus or minus infinite. Now let us take second case of L'Hopital's rule when this limit x tends to a fx and limit x tends to a gx they tends to plus or minus infinite. So again this proof is restrictive. We have made lot many assumptions. So in this case the assumptions that we are making is these functions fx and gx they are continuously differentiable. Limit x tends to a fx and gx it tends to other plus infinite or minus infinite g dash x it is unequal to zero in the neighborhood of a and then limit x tends to a f dash x upon g dash x it exists and it exists finitely and suppose the value is l and we'll also assume that this limit x tends to a fx and gx it also exists finitely so i'll start with limit x tends to a fx upon gx and I'll say suppose the value of this limit is l1. Now we know that it is infinity upon infinity form. So I can write l1 as limit x tends to a 1 upon gx upon 1 upon fx. So 1 upon gx will be 0 and 1 upon fx will be 0. So I've expressed it as 0 upon 0 form. Now in the first case, we have already proved that this function or this limit x tends to a fx upon gx is equal to limit x tends to a f dash x and g dash x when it is 0 upon 0 form. So now in this case, I can apply L'Hopital's rule. So if I apply L'Hopital's rule, I can write L1 as limit x tends to a minus 1 upon g square x into g dash x minus 1 upon f square x into f dash x. So I can write it as limit x tends to a f square x upon g square x into g dash x upon f dash x. So I will write it as limit x tends to a fx upon gx whole square and then here I'll write this 1 upon f dash x and g dash x. So now I'll separate the limits. So I'll write limit x tends to a fx upon gx whole square and then limit x tends to a 1 upon f dash x and then g dash x. Now we know that limit x tends to a fx upon gx it exists and we have assumed that it exists finitely and its value is l1. So I can write this limit as l1 and that should be equals to l1 square and then 1 upon f dash x and g dash x. Now 1 upon f dash x and g dash x. So f dash x upon g dash x this limit is equal to l. So I can write it as 1 upon l. So if I'll cancel L1 with L1, I can write L1 is equal to L. So by comparing these two values, I can say that limit x tends to a 
एफ एक्स अपॉन जी एक्स इज इक्वल टू लिमिट एक्सटेंड्स टू ए एफ डैश एक्स अपॉन जी डैश एक्स वेन एफ टेंड्स टू इन्फानेट एंड जी टेंड्स टू इन्फानेट एंड इन नो वे दिस प्रूफ इज कंप्लीट बिकॉज वी हैव टेकन अ वेरी स्पेशल केस एंड ऑल्सो वी हैव मेड लॉट मेनी एजम्पन दैट दीज लिमिट्स दे एग्जिस्ट एंड दे एग्जिस्ट फाइनेटली एंड ऑल्सो दैट वी कैन डिफाइन एल वन एंड एल टू बोथ सेपरेटली so all with all these assumptions we have proved this second case so, so this proof in no way is general proof and it doesn't claim that this proof holds for all the conditions for l'hopital's rule now here the question is we need to solve this limit which is limit x tends to 0 sin pi into cos square x upon x square now sin pi is 0 so this is 0 upon 0 form we we'll use l'hopital's rule so it'll be this limit x tends to 0 and then it'll be this cos pi cos square x and then pi into 2 cos x and then minus sin x whole divided by 2x now this 2 and 2 will cancel Now sine x upon x when x tends to zero it is one. Now when we put x as zero this is cos pi cos pi is minus one, and then we have this pi cos zero is one, and then we have this minus one. So answer to this limit is pi, and that's your option B. Now here the question is we need to solve this limit limit x tends to zero sine six x square upon log cos 2x square minus x now what we'll do is we'll write this as limit x tends to 0 sin 6x square upon 6x square and here will be this 6x square upon log cos 2x square minus x Now this is standard limit one, and this is zero point zero four, and for this we use L'Hopital's rule. So we can write this as limit x tends to zero, and that will be twelve x, and here it is one upon cos two x square minus x, and this is minus sine two x square minus x into 4x minus 1, which we can write as limit x tends to 0 minus 12x upon 10 2x square minus x into 4x minus 1, which is still 0 upon 0 form. Now what we'll do is we'll multiply and divide everything with 2x square minus x. Now this x will cancel. This is standard limit one. So we put this limit, we'll get minus twelve. This is minus one, and here also will be this minus one. So answer to this limit is minus twelve, and that's your option D. Now here this first question is: We need to find this limit, which is limit x tends to zero positive log. Sin x to the base, sin x by two. Now we write this as limit x tends to zero ln of sin x upon ln sin x by two, which is log zero upon zero. That is infinity upon infinity form. We can use L'Hopital's rule. So it will be this limit x tends to zero, and here will be. This one upon sin x into cos x, and this one is one upon sin x by two into cos x by two into one by two. Now we can write this as limit x tends to zero. 10x by 2 upon 10x, 
and this is 1 by 2. We will multiply and divide everything with x. Now this is 1, this is 1. So value of this limit is 1 and that's your option A. Now if we look at this second one, then L is this limit x tends to infinite sine under root of x plus 1 minus sine under root of x. Now we will use the formula sin c minus sin d. So it will be this limit x tends to infinite 2 sin c minus d by 2. So it will be under root of x plus 1 minus under root x by 2 into cos under root of x plus 1 plus under root of x by 2. Now we will rationalize this. If we rationalize this, we can write it as limit x tends to infinite and will be 2 sin and here will be 1 upon 2 under root of x plus 1 plus under root x and here will be this cos under root x plus 1 plus under root x by 2. Now when x tends to infinite, this is 1 upon infinite, so it will be sin 0, sin 0 is 0 into cos infinite and cos infinite is oxidating value minus 1 to 1. Now 0 into anything finite is finite, so answer to this limit is 0. So value of L is 0. Now what about if we take this limit as x tends to minus infinite. Now if x is negative, then in that case under root x will not be defined. So answer to this question will be L is 0 and M is undefined and that's your option B. Now here the question is we need to solve this limit which is limit x tends to infinite. Now we will rearrange this a bit. So we will write this as 2 to the power x to the power n upon e to the power x minus 3 to the power x to the power n upon e to the power x upon x to the power n upon e to the power x. Now what we will do is we will let x to the power n upon e to the power x as h. Now when x tends to infinite x to the power n upon e to the power x will be infinity upon infinity form. Now if we differentiate this n times there will be factorial n upon e to the power x and there will be factorial n upon infinite which is 0. So when x tends to infinite this h it tends to 0. So it will be this limit h tends to 0 2 to the power h minus 3 to the power h upon h. Now this is 0 upon 0 form. Now if we use L'Hopital's rule then we can write limit h tends to 0. This is 2 to the power h log 2 minus 3 to the power h log 3 upon 1 and if we put this limit h tends to 0. This is log 2 by 3 and that's your option B. Now here this first question is if this limit x tends to infinite eight x cube plus m x square to the power one by three minus n x it exists and is equal to one then the value of m by n is what we'll do is we'll let x as one by t then this limit will be this limit t tends to zero positive and we can write this as eight upon t cube plus m upon t square to the power 1 by 3 minus n upon t. Now if we simplify this, we can write this as limit t tends to 0 positive. This is 8 plus n t to the power 1 by 3 minus n divided by t and this limit is equal to 1. Now in order to solve this limit, first we will check its form. If we put t as 0, we will get this as 8 to the power 1 by 3 which is 2. 2 minus n upon 0. Now it has to be an indeterminate form to get this result 1. So that means from here we can say value of n must be 2. So if n is 2 then it is 0 upon 0 form. We can use L'Hopital's rule. We can write limit 
T tends to 0 positive and it will be this 1 by 3 8 plus mt to the power minus 2 by 3 into m divided by 1 and it will be equal to 1. Now if you put t as 0, we will get this as 1 by 3 and this is 8 to the power minus 2 by 3 m and it will be equal to 1. Now this is 1 by 12. So value of m is simply 12. Now once we have the value of m and n, the value of m by n will be equal to 12 divided by 2 which is 6 and that's your option D. Now here we are given a recursive relation which is Pn and it is A Pn minus 1 minus 1 and let P1 be A to the power x minus 1. Now if we find Pn at 0 then it will be P1 P10 is a to the power 0 minus 1, 0. And if we put P1 as 0, then P2 will be A to the power 0 minus 1, 0. So that's how we'll get all these P1, P2, Pn as 0. So Pn 0 will be 0. So you have to find this limit. X tends to 0. Pn upon X will be 0 upon 0 form. And if it is 0 upon 0 form, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So it will be equal to d by dx of pn upon 1. Now we differentiate pn, it will be this limit x tends to 0. Now this is a pn minus 1 log a into derivative of pn minus 1. And derivative of pn minus 1 will be a p n minus 2 log a and will continue up to this last one which is a to the power x into log a. Now if we put x as 0, we know that all p1, p2, pn they are 0. So a to the power 0 is 1. So value of this limit will be log of a to the power m and that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is limit. x tends to infinite x square sin log under root cos pi x. Now what we'll do is we'll let x as 1 by t. So it'll be this limit t tends to 0 positive and then it'll be 1 minus t square sin. We'll take this power out. So it'll be this 1 by 2 log cos pi t. Now if we put t as 0, now it will be this cos 0, cos 0 is 1, log 1 is 0. So it will be this sin 0, which is 0 upon 0 form. Now we use L'Hopital rule. So we can write limit t tends to 0 positive. Now this is cos 1 by 2 log cos pi t into 1 by 2 and then 1 upon cos pi t and then it will be this minus sin pi t into pi divided by 2t. Now we we'll multiply and divide with pi also. Now this is cos 0, cos 0 is 1. Now this also is cos 0. So it will be this one and then sine pi t upon pi t when t tends to 0 it is also 1. So value of this limit will be minus pi square upon 4. Mm -hmm. Now here the question is it says if fx is a differentiable function such that f0 is 0, f pi by 2 is 3 and f dash 0 is 1. If gx is this integral from x2 pi by 2 f dash t cosec t dt minus this integral from x2 pi by 2 cot t cosec t 
into ft dt then we need to find this limit extends to zero positive gx since gx is only defined in the right neighborhood of zero now what we'll do is we'll solve this question taking cosec ts first function and f dash ts second function so it'll be cosec t and then integral of f dash t will be f t and then limits are from x to pi by 2 minus this integral from x to pi by 2. Now derivative first, derivative of cosec t is minus cosec t cot t and then integral of f dash t is f t dt which will get cancelled with this other expression which is the same integral from 0 to pi by 2 cot t cosec t f t dt. So this gx will be cosec pi by 2 which is 1 and then it will be this f pi by 2 minus fx upon sin x. Now f pi by 2 is 3 so value of gx is 3 minus fx upon sin x. Now we need to find this limit extends to 0 positive gx. So if we take this limit x tends to 0 gx will be this 3 minus this limit x tends to 0 fx upon sin x. Now f0 is 0 and sin 0 is 0. So it is 0 upon 0 form. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So it will be this 3 minus limit x tends to 0 f dash x upon cos x. Now this is 3 minus f dash 0, f dash 0 is 1 and cos 0 is also 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So answer to this limit is simply 2. Now here the question is, we are given this determinant delta x and we need to find the value of this limit h tends to 0 root 3 delta pi by 3 upon h square. Now if we look at this limit h tends to 0. root 3 upon h square delta pi by 3 will be this 10 we'll put x as pi by 3 later so we'll write this as 10x 10x plus h 10x plus 2h 10x plus 2h 10x 10x plus h and here it is 10 x plus h 10 x plus 2 h and 10 x now what we'll do is we'll write c3 as c3 minus c2 and c2 as c2 minus c1 now we can write this as this limit say l and it'll be this limit h tends to 0 this is root 3 and here we have 10 x 10 x plus 2h and 10 x plus h here will be 10 x plus h minus 10 x this is 10 x minus 10 x plus 2h and here will be 10 x plus 2h minus 10 x plus h in the same way here will be 10 x plus 2h minus 10x plus h this is 10x plus h minus 10x and here will be this 10x minus 10x plus 2h and then we have this h square and what we'll do is we'll take 1 upon h in column 2 and 1 upon h in column 3. Now, if you look at these limits, now this limit h tends to 0, 10 x plus h minus 10 x upon h. This is 0 upon 0 form. If we differentiate this, we will get this as second square x and the second limit, limit 
x tends to 0 10x minus 10 x plus 2h upon h which again is 0 upon 0 upon if we differentiate this we will get this as minus 2 secant square x and finally this third one limit h tends to 0 10 x plus 2h minus 10 x plus h upon h and we differentiate and put h as 0 we will get this as secant square x so using these limits we can write this limit l as root 3 and then it will be this 10x here will be this secant square x secant square x and here it is x plus 2h when h tends to 0 it will again be 10x and here will be minus 2 secant square x and this is secant square x now this again is 10x this is secant square x and this is minus 2 secant square x now we will take r3 as r3 minus r2 and r2 as r2 minus r1 so this limit will be root 3 and then this is 10x secant square x secant square x and this is 10x minus x0 this is minus 3 secant square x and this is minus 3 secant square x and here will be this 0 minus 3 secant square x and it will be this 0 so if we expand it above this first column we will get this as root 3 into 10x into 9 secant to the power 4x now we need to find this limit when the value of x is pi by 3 so if we put x as pi by 3 this limit will be 9 root 3 now 10 pi by 3 is root 3 and second pi by 3 is 2 so that will be 2 to the power 4 so this limit will be 27 into 16 which is 432 now here this first question is if limit x tends to 0 log cot pi by 4 minus beta x upon 10 alpha x equals 1 find the value of alpha upon beta now we put x as 0 this is log 1 0 10 0 0 so which is 0 upon 0 form so we'll use log total's rule so it'll be this limit x tends to 0 now log is 1 upon x and 1 upon x is 10 so it'll be this 10 pi by 4 minus beta x and then derivative of cot is minus cos x square pi by 4 minus beta x and then into minus beta upon now derivative of 10 is secant square so it will be secant square alpha x into alpha and this is equal to 1 now we will put x as 0 now 10 pi by 4 is 1 now cosec pi by 4 is root 2 so it will be this minus 2 and then minus beta upon alpha equals 1 so value of alpha upon beta will be 2 so answer to this question is 2 now the question is a function is defined from r2 0 to infinite and gxb twice differentiable functions such that f dash and g double dash are continuous functions on r now it is given that suppose f dash 2 equals g2 equals 0 and f double dash 2 is unequal to 0 and g dash 2 is also unequal to 0 we need to find this limit which is limit x tends to 2 fx into gx upon f dash x into g dash x and it is equal to 1 now first we will check this form 
that is f2 into g2 and g2 is 0 and f dash 2 is 0 so it is 0 0.0 form and when it is 0, 0.0 form we use L'Hopital's rules we write limit x tends to 2 now this is fx into g dash x plus gx into f dash x upon f dash x into g double dash x plus g dash x into f double dash x that is equal to 1. Now we put this limit so we write f2 into g dash 2 plus g2 into f dash 2 upon f dash 2 g double dash 2 plus g dash 2 into f double dash 2 that is equal to 1. Now we know that g2 is 0 so this expression will be 0 and also f dash 2 is 0 so it will also be 0 now g dash 2 and g dash 2 will cancel so we will get f double dash 2 equals f2 and which is unequal to 0 now in the question it says its codomain is from 0 to infinite that means this f double dash 2 which is equal to f2 it is greater than 0 now if we look at f dash 2 we know that f dash 2 is 0 and f double dash 2 is greater than 0 that means this 2 is a point of local minima so that means this option a it is correct that means this option b will be incorrect and clearly f double dash 2 is equal to f2 that means this option c is also incorrect now it says fx minus f double dash x equals to 0 for at least one x belongs to r we know that this is true for x equals 2 that means this option d is also correct so the correct options are a and d now here the question is we are given this function fx we need to find right hand limit and left hand limit now we find right hand limit we are given that limit x tends to 0 positive sin inverse 1 minus fraction part of x cos inverse 1 minus fraction part x upon root 2 fraction part of x 1 minus fraction part of x now what we will do is we will let x as 0 plus h and we also know that fractional part of h is simply h so it will be this limit h tends to 0 positive sin inverse 1 minus h cos inverse 1 minus h upon root 2 h and it will be this 1 minus h now we don't have a problem with sin inverse because it will be sin inverse 1 pi by 2 and 1 minus h is also 1 so we'll put the values in these two then it'll be sin inverse 1 which is pi by 2 and we also have this root 2 now we are left with cos inverse 1 minus h upon under root h when this limit h tends to 0 positive now this is cos inverse 1 which is 0 and h is 0 so it is 0 upon 0 form we we'll use L'Hopital's rule, we we'll write limit h tends to 0 positive pi upon 2 root 2. Now this is minus 1 upon under root of 1 minus 1 minus h whole square and then derivative of minus h is minus 1 divided by under root h is 1 upon 2 root h. Now minus and minus will be plus so it will be this limit h tends to 0 pi upon 2 root 2 and we can write this as 2 root h and here will be this under root of 2h minus h square now under root h will cancel so we get this value as pi by 2 so for this function its right hand limit is pi by 2 now we will find its left hand limit
now for left hand limit we write limit x tends to 0 negative sine inverse 1 minus fractional part of x cos inverse 1 minus fractional part of x upon under root 2 fraction part of x and 1 minus fraction part of x. Now we let x as 0 minus h. Now we know that fraction part of minus h is 1 minus h. So now we can write this as this limit h tends to 0 positive sine inverse 1 minus 1 minus h cos inverse 1 minus 1 minus h root 2 1 minus h and this is 1 minus 1 minus h which is this limit h tends to 0 positive sin inverse h into cos inverse h upon root 2 1 minus h and then h now sin inverse h upon h is 1 cos inverse 0 is pi by 2 and this is root 2 so its left hand limit will be pi upon 2 root 2 so for this function left hand limit is pi upon 2 root 2 now since left hand limit and right hand limit they are not equal so this limit it does not exist at x equals 0. Now here the question is we are given this function fx as log x square plus e to the power x upon log x to the power 4 plus e to the power 2x. Now if this limit x tends to infinite fx is l and x tends to minus infinite fx is m then find the relationship between l and m. Now for L, it will be this limit x tends to infinite log x square plus e to the power x upon log x to the power 4 plus e to the power 2x which is infinity upon infinity form. We will use L'Hopital's rule so it will be this limit x tends to infinite and then we can write this as 1 upon x square plus e to the power x into 2x plus e to the power x and here it will be 1 upon x to the power 4 plus e to the power 2x into 4x cube plus 2 e to the power 2x. Now we can write this as limit x tends to infinite. 2x plus e to the power x upon x square plus e to the power x into x to the power 4 plus e to the power 2x upon 4x cube plus and this is 2 e to the power 2x. Now here we will divide everything with e to the power x and here we will divide everything with e to the power 2x. So we can write this as limit x tends to infinite 2 x upon e to the power x plus 1 x square upon e to the power x plus 1 and here it will be x to the power 4 upon e to the power 2x plus 1 and this is 4 x cube upon e to the power 2x plus 2. Now we know the standard result that this limit x tends to infinite x to the power n upon e to the power x it is 0 and it is very easy to prove this is infinity upon infinity form so we we'll keep using L'Hopital's rule it will always be infinity upon infinity form so if we differentiate this n times we will get this is factorial n upon e to the power x now this is factorial n upon infinite and which is 0 so this limit will always take the value 0 so this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 this is 0 that means from here we can say value of l is simply 1 by 2. Now we find the value of m. Now for m we have 
this limit x tends to minus infinite and again we will get this same differentiation will be 2x plus e to the power x upon x square plus e to the power x into x to the power 4 plus e to the power 2x upon 4x cube plus 2 into e to the power 2x. Now here this is x and x4 x to the power 5 here it is x square and x cube x to the power 5 so we will divide everything with x to the power 5 so we can write limit x tends to minus finite this is 2 plus e to the power x upon x and here it will be 1 plus e to the power 2x upon x to the power 4 and this is 1 plus e to the power x upon x square and here will be this 4 plus 2 e to the power 2x upon x cube now e to the power nx upon x to the power r where limit x tends to minus infinite uh, e to the power minus infinite is 0 and 0 upon infinite is 0 so all these terms they will be 0 so from here we will get the value of m is also 1 by 2 so l is 1 by 2 and m is also 1 by 2 in this case answer to this question will be l equals m and that's your option a now here the question is, let fx be a continuous odd function which vanishes exactly at one point. Now it is continuous odd function and we know that for odd function f0 is 0 and f1 equals 1 by 2. That means this function, it will be in first and third quadrant with value at 0, 0 and at 1 this value is 1 by 2. Now we are given that capital Fx is this integral from minus 1 to x ft dt and capital Gx is this integral from minus 1 to x t into mod of f of ft dt for all x belongs to minus 1 to 2. Now it is given that this limit x tends to 1. fx upon gx is 1 by 14. Now we write this as this limit x tends to 1 and then this integral from minus 1 to x ft dt upon this integral from minus 1 to x t into mod of f of ft dt that is equal to 1 by 14. Now if we put x as 1 then limits of this integral will be from minus 1 to 1 and we know that fx is an odd function. So integral of an odd function from minus a to plus a will be simply 0. In the same way this integral from minus 1 to 1 t into mod of f of ft dt. Now ft is odd, f of ft will be odd but this mod sign it makes an even function and this t is odd so this function is an odd function so again value well, this integral will be 0 so this is 0 upon 0 form now if it is 0 upon 0 form we can use L'Hopital's rule so if we differentiate this we can write this as this limit x tends to 1 fx and here will be this x into mod of f of fx that is equal to 1 by 14 now if we put x as 1, we write this as f1 upon mod of f of f1 that is equal to 1 by 14. Now in the question it is given that value of f1 is 1 by 2. So it will be this 1 by 2 upon mod of f1 by 2 will be equal to 1 by 14 or mod of f1 by 2 is equal to 7. Now since fx is positive when x is greater than 0, so we can write f1 by 2 is actually plus 7. Value of f1 by 2 is 7 and that is the answer to this question. Now here the question is we need to solve this limit x tends to a 1 upon a square minus x square whole square and then we have 
a square plus x square upon ax minus 2 sin a pi by 2 into sin pi x by 2. Now we put x as a, it'll be this 0 in the denominator and the numerator will be this 2 minus 2 0 so it is 0 upon 0 form. Now what we'll do is we'll subtract 2 and we'll add 2. Now we can add this as limit x tends to a 1 upon a square minus x square whole square and here it will be a square plus x square minus 2ax which we can write a minus x whole square upon ax and then plus we will take this 2 common it will be 1 minus sine a pi by 2 into sine pi by 2x. Now we will multiply this a square minus x square whole square. So we can write this as this limit x tends to a and it will be this a minus x whole square and here will be this ax into and we will write this as a plus x whole square into a minus x whole square and here it will be this 2 into 1 minus sine a pi by 2 into sine pi by 2x upon a minus x square into a plus x square. Now here a minus x whole square will cancel. Now we put x as a, we will get this as a square plus 2a square. So there will be 1 upon 4 a to the power 4 and plus now here we don't have problem with this a plus x. So it will be so it will be this 2a whole square. So it will be 4a square. We will cancel this 2 with 4. So we can add this as 1 by 2 a square into this limit x tends to a 1 minus sine a pi by 2 into sine pi x by 2 upon a minus x whole square. It will be sine a pi by 2 whole square and a is an odd integer. So it will be 1 minus 1 0. So it will be 0 upon 0 form. So now we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now if we use L'Hopital's rule we can write 1 upon 4 a to the power 4 plus 1 upon 2 a square limit x tends to a and this is minus sine a pi by 2 and this is cos pi by 2x into pi by 2 upon 2 into a minus x into minus 1. Now this minus and minus will cancel. Now this again is 0 upon 0 form because cos odd multiple of pi by 2 is 0 and a minus 0 is a minus a is also 0. So we now get this as 1 upon 4 a to the power 4 plus 1 upon 2 a square and then this limit x tends to a sine a pi by 2 now this is minus sine pi by 2 x and then it will be this pi by 2 square divided by 2 into minus 1 this minus and minus will cancel now we will put x as a if you put x as a we will get this as 1 upon 4 a to the power 4 plus 1 upon 2a square and here will be this sin a pi by 2 into sin a pi by 2 which is 1 into now this is pi square by 4 and we have this 2 here so it will be this 1 upon 4 a to the power 4 plus pi square by 16a square so we will take this LCM so it will be this 16 a to the power 4 and then it will be 4 plus pi square into a square and that is the answer to this limit.
Now in this question, we are given two functions fx and gx and we need to find this value of limit x tends to alpha positive f of gx. Now clearly this function fx, it is a continuous function. So when f is continuous, we can take this limit inside. So we can actually write this limit as limit x tends to alpha positive sine pi upon 12 into gx. So it will be this sine pi by 12 into this limit x tends to alpha positive and gx is 2 log under root of x minus under root of alpha upon log e to the power under root x minus e to the power under root alpha. So we have to simplify this limit. So we'll solve this limit separately. Say this limit is L. Now this L is this limit x tends to alpha positive 2 log under root of x minus under root of alpha upon log e to the power under root x minus e to the power under root alpha. It is infinity upon infinity form. And if it is infinity upon infinity form, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we can write this as L equals this limit x tends to alpha positive. Now this is 2 log is under root of x minus under root of alpha and this is 1 upon 2 root x and here if we take log it will be e to the power under root x minus e to the power under root alpha and then will be e to the power under root x upon 1 upon 2 root x. Now 1 upon 2 root x it will cancel. Here we will take e to the power under root alpha common. So we can write this as limit x tends to alpha positive 2 and then e to the power under root alpha and here it will be e to the power under root of x minus under root of alpha minus 1 and here it is under root x minus under root alpha upon e to the power under root x. Now this is standard limit e to the power x minus 1 upon x when x tends to 0. So this standard limit is 1 and e to the power alpha upon e to the power alpha is 1. So value of this limit is 2. Now if we put value of L as 2, this expression it will be simply sine pi by 12 into 2 which is sine pi by 6 and sine pi by 6 is 1 by 2. So answer to this limit is 0 0.5.